Okay, so let's get started. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to this first session of our Talk to Expert series, um, where we'll focus on features and technologies related with uh, Barbara platform. My name is Juan, I'm VP of Growth at Barbara, and uh, I'll be hosting today's webinar. Today, um, in this first session, we are diving into a um, very interesting topic, uh, especially for those of you that are data scientists or ML engineers, and has to deal with the deployment of models uh, in your day by day. So we will talk about deploying AI models to its nodes directly uh, from uh, Jupyter Notebook. We have with us Alex Cantos. Hi, Alex. He is our VP of product. Hello. Alex, just to uh, make sure we don't exceed the time, um, why don't you go uh, and start uh, with the presentation? In the meantime, I will be trying to uh, enable your your uh, your camera so you can show us your face. Okay, the fair enough, fair enough. Um, all right, so I'm Alex and I'm here to show you our new Python SDK. Uh, what you're going to be seeing, or you are already seeing, is just a notebook that I, I have created trying to mimic the workflow that a data scientist would flow uh, whenever they're creating their models and they are deploying them. With one slight change, uh, and it's the fact that we will be deploying to an Edge device, we'll be deploying to an Edge node. Uh, instead of your typical deployment that would be in a cloud environment, right? And we're going to be deploying on an edge node with Barbara, right? And that's why we are here. Surprise, surprise. Uh, so yes, the idea is to go through all the process of creating the model and deploying it uh, and starting, stopping, or removing it. So I can show you how easy it is to do this directly from your Jupyter Notebook. All right, so let's get on to it. Um, so the first thing that you want to do uh, is import all your data science libraries, right? And I'm gonna uh, get executing all this because, well, this is typical uh, things that you're gonna need. I'm sure that you use many more than I've used here. Um, and the other thing you want to do is import Barbara. Barbara is a, is a Python uh, library that you can download from PyP. Uh, it's still not available because we are finalizing the Q&A, but it will be available in the upcoming weeks. Uh, so you just pip Barbara and then import Barbara in your notebook and off you go. So I'm going to import Barbara. There we go. And, and I'm going to go very quickly through the process of training a model. It is a very silly model. It's a typical Titanic model where uh, you predict whether you're going to survive the Titanic uh, depending on your age or the class you're in or how much you paid uh, for your ticket. Uh, it's a silly model. It doesn't really make sense on the edge, but uh, it's a very lightweight sort of way of recreating all the process that um, any data scientist would go through. So the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, read the data, so load the data from a CSV. I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning here. Uh, here we can see uh, the cleaned data. Um, we're going to visualize it a little bit. This is your typical plot to look for uh, relationships between the different variables. Um, next step that you want to do is probably separate your data in train and test groups. So you, you do that with a typical uh, command, and then you're going to normalize it somehow, right? So now we got our data. Obviously, this is a process that takes a lot of time in real life. Uh, in, when you're trying to, when you're dealing with real data, here it's a simplified version just to get onto the point where we deploy the model. Um, the next thing that you want to do uh, would be define the model. In this case, we're going to define a model. We, we're using TensorFlow, by the way. I didn't say that. Uh, we're going to be using TensorFlow to uh, train the model and also to, to deploy the model. So the idea here is to define uh, a model that has three layers with 551 neurons and you have the ReLU twice and a sigmoid. Well, it's just a, a sample model. We uh, define it and there comes a time where we train it. And because it's a very simplistic sort of uh, example, it's going to train very fast. It's going to converge uh, in a while. And we're going to get 
approximately an 80% of our quality, which is not too bad for this sort of uh, easy example. We could uh, check that out if you wanted to. There you go, 79% of um, accuracy. And there comes the moment where we start to uh, to deal with things that have to do with the deployment, right? So you have arrived at the point where you have your model, uh, it's trained. Obviously, it will take you a lot of time to do this because you're gonna run experiments, retry parameters, and all that magic that data scientists do, do, uh, know how to do. But um, when it comes to the moment where you need to deploy it, uh, then there's the first big question, which is uh, should I deploy it to the edge or to the cloud? Uh, I'm not going to go into that. Let's assume that we want to deploy in the edge. Uh, but before that, we need to save the model, right? And that's what we do in here, where we save it with a format TF, which is a TensorFlow native format. Right? So we execute it, and we get this Titanic version 1 saved into, uh, into a local folder of the notebook. Right, and now it's when we go on to the Barbara SDK. So the first thing that you want to do in our SDK is to call the um, initialization function, which is the API client. So you want to call it using your credentials. I have loaded my credentials of a JSON file here because obviously I didn't want to, sh to share them uh, in clear text. Uh, you just have to feed them in here, right? So these are your credentials for the Barbara platform. So you initialize the SDK and that gives you a handler, which is the BBR handler. And this handler allows you to call all the subsequent functions. And what's going to happen is that every time that you call one function um, using that handler, that's going to produce a call to the API with your credentials, uh, it's going to perform something in the platform. Uh, and the first thing that you want to do in the platform would be uploading the model. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to choose a name for the model. In this case, uh, I'm going to choose the model, the name Titanic. Uh, and then I'm going to upload it. That's what I do with this command, right? So bbr.models.upload. Um, if we execute it, then it's going to upload the model. I'm going to let me do something because I was running some uh, tests before. So I might have loads of Titanics going on in my platform. This is the Barbara platform, by the way. So I'm going to remove them. So we start from a fresh uh, library. All right. So forget about this for the moment and let me upload it again. So if I click on upload, it's going to upload the model to the platform, there you go. And this is the ID of this recently up uploaded model. So the idea here is that it's gonna create a new uh, model in the platform uh, and it's gonna upload the version that we have just uh, trained. So if we go to the platform, which is this here, and if we refresh the library, we're gonna see here this, uh, it's not uh, allowing me to refresh, let me click in here, that's better. All right, so we're going to see here uh, this new model that we have uploaded. So we have the Titanic with version 1.0.0. That's because if you don't supply a version in here, then it uh, assumes that it's uh, the first one, right? But you could still give it a version name if you wanted to. So there's, a, there's an extra parameter that you could provide, which is a version name, in case you want to give it uh, a specific version. All right, so now if we list models, which we can do using bbr.models.list here in our uh, notebook, then we can see a list of just one model, which is basically the same that we can see uh, online in the platform, but integrated in our notebook. Right, uh, and we can also list the versions that this model has. So this Titanic model, it has, we know, one version because we have just uploaded one version at the moment. We could list it with the command list versions, and it's going to list one version, right? So the version is the 100 and it has this ID, right? Okay, so we have our model in the platform. Uh, as you can recall, it was just a couple of commands. So you just initialized uh, the client and then uploaded it, right? So we have it in the library. There comes a time where we 
um, deploy it to the edge device. So before we're gonna choose the device that we want to deploy in. So for that, we first list all the nodes that we have. So we will bbr.nodes.list. In this case, we only have one node, which is conveniently named Python SDK demo. So if we go here to the list of nodes in our platform, where we can see just the same information. So we have this Python SDK demo. Um, we're gonna leave this open uh, because we're gonna come back here to see what's going on when we deploy the model. So yes, we have that node and we're gonna deploy it on that very node. And that's what I am specifying in here. So I have given it the name of the node I want to deploy in. Then I've specified the name of the model that I want to deploy. And then it's as easy as making bbr.models.deploy. Once again, you could choose the version name if you wanted to, but if you don't provide it, then it will deploy the latest version, which is what we want to do at the moment. So let's just hit run. And this is, is gonna take that model of the library and it's gonna send it to the device. Let's remember that this is an edge device, so it's not running in the cloud, it's just, Somewhere else, it's a uh, it's just a device that can uh, that is running Barbara and that will be running your uh, models in a moment. There you go. It has just deployed it. So if we go here, we can see the Titanic model running, right? So um, here you have uh, all the logs. You could stop, play. Well, you can do everything that you can do from our um, graphical UX UI, but we're not paying attention to that today. We just want to do everything from our Jupyter Notebook. So we have just uh, deployed the model and that means that we have created a workload. Anything deployed in Barbara, we call it a workload. And in this case, this is a model workload. So if we want to see which workloads we have running in the device, we can just very easily call bbr.workloads dot list and that's going to list all the workloads that are running on the device um, and we have actually one right which is this workload id and it happens to be the titanic model uh, on version 1.0.0 okay now that we have it running we could stop it if we wanted to let me copy and paste the id of the workload and by calling dot stop i could just stop it uh, you can see that the model is in status started. We could also check that here. It's just started, but we could stop it directly from our notebook. So I just click run. Uh, we are executing the stop command and it's gonna come back in a moment saying, hey, everything's fine, hopefully. <laughs> you know, there's no a demo without a demo effect. Um, all right, so it came back saying, hey, I've stopped it. So now the model should be stopped. If we go to the platform, we could very easily say that it actually has stopped. Now we can also start it again if you wanted to with the command dot start. Uh, you can see that the uh, SDK is uh, divided in different modules. So we have the nodes module to manage nodes. We have the workloads node module to manage workloads. And we have the models module to manage mod models, right? So in this case, we're dealing with workloads. It has started again. Uh, there you go, it's running, so it's serving. Um, and we could do many things. Here I've uh, decided to just upload a new version of the model, which happens to be the same model because I haven't um, trained a different model, but let's just, let's imagine that's a new model that I have trained and I have saved. Uh, so I could very easily upload this new version because I haven't provided the version, it's gonna upload it with the upcoming version number, which as you can imagine, it's 101. So that new version is there. And now, I can very easily deploy this new version. So if I hit deploy again, then it's gonna deploy the latest version, which is the one I have just provided. And the good thing about this is that it's not gonna create a new space with a new model uh, in parallel to the old one. It's gonna update the one that we're running, right? So we can very easily come into this cycle, uh, this loop where we train, we deploy, we train, we deploy, we train, we deploy, and we keep 
um, the wheel running. So it's very comfy because everything is done from your notebook. So it has been deployed. If we just go here to nodes again, to our SDK demo node, you could see that it's running, but in this case, it's version 101. So it's the newest version that we have just uploaded. All right, so we're reaching the end of our um, notebook here, uh, and I think the end of our available time as well. So uh, let's remove the model. That's the last thing that we can do. Again, uh, workloads.remove with the workload ID. We hit run, and that's gonna send an API uh, request for the platform to remove that model from that device. Removing sometimes takes a, take a little bit time there you go so now if we go to the platform um here's still deleting there you go so the model has uh disappeared and that's it uh i hope i was uh quick quick enough but also detailed enough so you have uh, got a grasp of uh, what can be done with this uh, notebook python sdk and over to you juan Great, thank Alex. That was really straightforward and um, very interesting to see that in motion. Um, we have two questions that we got in in our Q and A section. So right. uh, let me just read them. So the first one is from Mark. It says, uh, "Do you support only TensorFlow?" Yes, at the moment, yes. Uh, but we're working on uh, adding support for other uh, frameworks, in particular in V2 of uh, our MLOps functionality, we're going to be supporting PyTorch and ONNX. And also there's a V3 plant where uh, we will support scikit-learn and XGBoost. That's the idea is to cover all those five sort of frameworks. Great. And the second one is from John. And it say uh, it looks like you're using the notebook from your local local computer. Can I use the SDK with my notebook on a on Azure? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, short answer is yes. Um, at the moment, uh, because it's not published in the official PyP uh, sort of repository, uh, you can't import it in in any like cloud notebook. But as soon as it gets released, uh, probably in a couple of weeks when we finish with the Q&A, um, then it should be usable from anywhere, uh, even from Python scripts. If you don't want to use a, a notebook, but you want to do things from a Python, just you know, a script that does it uh, without giving you feedback, you can also use it from there. So, so the, the short answer is yes. Okay, fantastic. Um, I have... Uh, another question, but this is from me, just All for right. everyone to know. Yeah, I, I wrote it just in case there was no questions. Fortunately, we have a couple. So, but it's a typical question that I've been asked sometimes when explaining this feature to uh, to different uh, customers, which is how do I get the credentials for uh, using the SDK once it's public? All right. Um, I mean, the... Yeah, you know, the, the Python SDK, I mean, the code is, is going to be freely available. You can just import it and you could use it. But in order to uh, communicate with the API, you need credentials for, uh, uh, to, you know, you, you need a client ID and a client secret. And that comes with the uh, enterprise package, Barbara Enterprise. You know that Barbara has like different pricing, uh, like tires. Well, the, the enterprise is the one that uh, brings you the ability to use the API, not only the Python SDK, but the API as a whole, right? Which is what the Python SDK uses underneath. Okay. Um, I think that's all regarding questions. I have, uh, I don't see any, any additional question. Um, anyway, if you guys in the, in the, in the background, if you, want to share anything with us, you want to shoot any question uh, offline, please feel, feel free to do it. Um, uh, you can just send me a mail to juan at barbara.tech and I will address it to Alex. So uh, don't be shy, just uh, share anything you, you want to know about this feature or any other thing related to the platform. 
Alex, thanks a lot for for your time. It's been really insightful and and interesting to see this in in action uh, for the first time. So um, hopefully we will release it uh, publicly very soon. Thanks for you, Juan, and thanks for the for the people listening to us. See you guys. See you guys in next uh, sessions of this uh, Talk to the Expert series. Goodbye. Bye bye.